Boundary stones were first used by Numa Pompilius, the second king of Rome in 673 BC. And boundary stones have been used ever since. In 1555, an act of parliament made parishes responsible for the upkeep of markers. And it's possible that the boundary stones of Clitheroe were put down at this time. From 1536, the big chiefs of the town had to primulate the town boundaries to check that everything was in place. If anybody moved a boundary marker, they could end up in court. In 1641, William Cotton ended up in court for moving the boundary stone at Edisford Bridge. And in 1695, two people were in court for cutting down an ash tree, which was a boundary marker between Horrocksford and the Clitheroe town boundary. Boundary markers take many forms. Boundary stones, roads, tracks, rivers, streams, mirrors, dikes, hedges, field lines, and even old trees. Lang's 1766 map of Clitheroe shows all the burger plots of the town. No burger plot, no electoral vote, and not included within the town boundary. For 700 years, the parish of Clitheroe Castle was governed by the Honour of Clitheroe and did not become part of Clitheroe until 1895. This Oddish map of 1781 shows the 34 boundary stones. This is how it looks on a modern map. Number one stone was the other side of the brook from Doug Street, just across the road from Tesco. The stone vanished about 1900, long before the bridge was built. Number two stone also went missing, but about 10 years ago. It should be on the back boundary fence of Brookside Primary School, but went missing. The number three stone is in the back garden of a house in Bracken Hay on the High Moor Park Estate. The number four stone is in the field behind the houses on the High Moor Park Estate. The number five stone is sadly missing. And the number six stone is in the fields behind the Oak Brooks Industrial Estate. Stones three, four and six are probably some of the oldest stones we have. Stones seven, eight, nine and ten are also missing. The number 11 stone is safe in the fence line between the grammar school football pitches behind Green Drive. Stones 12, 13, 14, 15 and 16 have all gone missing over the years. But number 17 is still here. It's down Eddisford at the side of the turret block under the hedge. Stones number 18 and 19 are missing. At the bottom of Henthorn, across the brook from the recycling centre, is number 20. Stones 21, 22 and 23 are also missing. The number 24 is on Wound Lane at the side of the lodge, right opposite George Street. 25 and 26 are missing and 27 is in Dent's Yard at the back of the old mill. Number 28 is missing. 29 and 30 are in the woods overlooking Standon Hall. Although number 29 is chipped and leaning over, it is still in its original position. Stones number 31, 32, 33 and 34 have all gone missing over the years. Then, in the mid-1760s, New stones were ordered from the quarry on Pendle Hill. Eight stones were ordered, but only four remain. Two stones were rescued from Chapman Old Road, but one got pinched. The other one is in Dindale's plant yard at Brooks, concreted in for safekeeping. Another stone is on the top path of Cross Hill's quarry, being eaten by a tree. The other two stones are down Eddisford, down by the river. Up to this point, the council owns land both sides of the river. In 2005, three more boundary stones appeared, complements of the Rotary Club. One on Pendle Road, 
one on West Bradford Road and one on Edister Road, all marking the approaches coming into town. Boundary stones are important, they're part of our heritage and it's up to people of Clitheroe to look after them for future generations. <laughs>